Before I talk about Keisha, I've got to answer this quick question and it says which software is more flexible for 3D design, AutoCAD, Keisha or SolidWorks? Now for starters, AutoCAD is no 3D design tool but 2D. If you need something from Autodesk that is remotely somewhat parametric, try Inventor. Always take notice that although both softwares are from the same vendors, there is no direct link between the two. AutoCAD has some 3D features, but you can only assemble a bit, do some boolean, and that's it. Inventor and SolidWorks are the mid-range applications. They also have a decent user interface, but you will need to learn and understand parametric modeling. Also, the feature palettes of these two softwares are a bit smaller than a fully-fledged high-end 3D card system, but you need a couple of weeks to get started on producing some decent models. Then there is Keisha. This is one out of three major high-end CAD systems. PTC Creo and Siemens NX are the other two. Keisha is a powerhouse, fully 3D parametric with an enormous feature palette which makes it somehow not difficult to get used to in the early stages. Each of the three high-end systems has its own specific advantages and programming structures. You would be needing months of intensive training or practice to fully master all of its ins and outs. Mastering Keisha is of great benefit if you happen to find yourself in the right company someday. Today's video is going to focus more on Keisha, but intermittently I would be reading and answering some online questions I got over the weekend. Look. We are a 3D family here. Now, after watching this video, if you happen to have any detailed information on the topic, kindly leave them in the comment section below. Since it's a channel for absolute beginners, your detailed info could come in handy to a beginner just passing through. Okay, let's jump on today's video. Someone might ask, so how do I begin with Keisha as a beginner? Now. Keisha is a very wide software and has more than 60 environments under 10 different classifications. Each environment has n number of tools in it. So mastering the entire software within a year is going to be very difficult. But people working in CAD areas don't necessarily have to study all the environments in Keisha. For instance, a surface designer or mechanical part designer doesn't have to learn the machining and other environments. It is sufficient for them to know about part design, surface design, and assembly design only. Now, to begin with, 1. Start by learning the part design, assemble design, generative shape design, sheet metal design, and drafting environment. Most of the CAD courses in Kasia will teach all of these with a course duration of, I think, 2 to 6 months based on their teaching methodology. Two. If you are going to learn it all by yourself, I would recommend at least 3 to 4 hours a day. I can assure you of becoming very familiar with all the basic tools within a month of consistent practice. From there, mastering each tool isn't going to be difficult. So it all boils down to the time and dedication. Look, there is no software in this world too difficult to learn. So far as it was programmed by a human being, it is learnable. Keisha is one of the best tools there is available on the market right now for designing mechanical products, structures and buildings with great accuracy. One great usefulness of Keisha is the software's ability to design in two dimension for analysis and then convert the file into 3D dimension for real visualization. This method alone helps its users eliminate the risk of failure. Keisha is widely used almost everywhere in the automobile industry but this doesn't make it a compulsory need for every individual that's because Keisha is very expensive individuals startup and smaller companies tend to find alternatives i decided to do a little bit research on a couple of alternatives i hope you find them useful the alternatives are usually pro e nx or solidworks which are not exactly cheap but less expensive compared to Keisha. There are even extra cheaper alternatives like Rhinoceros 3D which I have already made a video on, link in the description below. 
many companies also tend to combine all the three alternatives i just made mention of because of the dot igs file extension which can be opened across all three platforms there are certain limitations though but not that big of a deal if you are able to work your way around it now let me take my first question how difficult is it to teach yourself CAD? CAD softwares are actually not very difficult to learn in my opinion. The question is whether you have a little bit experience with manual drawing or 2D sketching like I explained in my rhinoceros video. Secondly, if you want to learn all of the above softwares, then it is important to select the right software. Most of them have a steeper learning curve. You learn a software by using it consistently. So you should focus on exploring the software by mostly using the trial based versions. Secondly, if your main goal is to work for bigger companies such as Tesla, GM Motors or Ford, then you should be targeting a more powerful software so that you can easily work on other unmatched softwares if the occasion demands. Kajia includes role-based dashboards that put everything a user needs right at their fingertips and helps designers optimize designs by testing them against multiple use case scenarios. It has inbuilt capabilities for brainstorming and collaboration. Role-based dashboards are available both in the cloud and on-premise. Kajia's user experience is top in its field at performing all other CAD systems including SOLIDWORKS when it comes to ease of use and intuitiveness. Now, before I continue, let me list out some of the downsides to using Kajia. 1. Its user interface is very limited and looks like a Windows 95 operating system. 2. Kajia has difficulty in understanding error messages, so you would have to figure those errors manually, I think. 3. Kajia costs more than my uncle's brand new 2022 Dodge Challenger. 4. Kaja users are accused to spend a lot of money in and out of college. Now, the sick part is you would realize only a pinch of companies are really in need of Kaja users and they are mostly bigger companies, so your skills has to be top notch. 5. Kaja does not work well with imported geometries as compared to NX software. 6. Kaja's sketcher is slower and stricter than many softwares. And then 7. Limitation on cloud integration and also integration to other software packages. So before choosing Kajia as a beginner in college, I hope you keep in mind any of these downsides as well. A quick one here, making it to this point of the video is a plus for my channel. Therefore hitting the subscribe button I pray would open your eyes and mind to knowing what exact card software you were born to use. Let's continue. The range of Kajia's potential allows it to be applied in a broad variety of industries such as industrial machinery, automotive, aerospace, electrical, electronics, ship building and consumer goods including designs for products such as clothing and jewelry. Kajia as an overall tool provides tools for collective development of products such as a car and a bicycle. The data and work can be shared concurrently on the same design team. Kaja permits you to do this by saving all files on a common database so that the people with the right permissions may edit and access any part of the product. As a solid modeling tool, it connects the 3D parametric feature with 2D tools and addresses every design through the manufacturing process. Okay, let me take another question from this guy called Butileka. And he says, NX and Kajia, which one is best? Mr. Booty Licker. Look, both NX and Kajia are high-end CAD software packages used in the automotive industry. The question shouldn't be which one is best. People have their preferences and part of that is subjective. What isn't subjective is where the software is being used. For example, NX is preferred more by GM and others whilst Ford tend to tilt towards Kajia. You can learn more about softwares used in the automotive industry by watching job postings. That will tell you if it's being used and also some information on how it's being used. 
you should mostly focus on what, where, and why you want to take a particular career path. Then from there, you can do an extensive research on which software being used is going to suit your style. Look, let me be very honest with you. These softwares are very expensive and the question as to which one is best is way overboard. Always remember, most of the softwares with the tag best might be way overkill for your needs or might not even be the right softwares for you. Doing away with all softwares, let me share this little knowledge with you. I personally think a well-rounded engineer should have a good background in both design and analysis. With this, it's easier to work with any software, especially if you are lucky enough to find yourself on a job with a lot of experienced people. They can easily help you out get familiar with their go-to software. Besides, software companies would prefer investing into someone with the creative skills than someone who knows how to use all the softwares in the world but can't create nothing unique, thoughtful or purposeful. Let me take one last question here. Which one is more powerful, Kasia or 3D's Max? Oh, these are both different softwares with different domains. Kasia is an engineering design and analysis software that provides excellent tools for precisely designing large assemblies, plans, systems, and mechanisms. Whilst 3D's Max, on the other hand, is focused on visual graphics 3D animation, models, games, and high-quality rendered images. Okay, I've gotten to the cap of this video. I've left a lot of links to YouTube handles with great tutorials on CAD and Kasia itself. I also have a link in the description below to a Kasia documentation you can study anywhere, anytime, any day. Okay, if you love this video, then a sub to my channel will be very, very appreciated. See you in my next video.